Hey guys, Sonish here with some Heroes of the Storm action for you. We're going to be doing a replay here, as you can see. I can see everyone's vision, which is quite nice. I wish I could see this in the game sometimes. So we do have, on our blue team, we have Kerrigan, Vala, Falstad, Zeratul, and Anubrak. And on our blue team, we have... Wait, that is our blue team, sorry. On our red team, we have Stitches, Rhaegar, Sergeant Hammer, ETC, or... Uh, ED wow, that threw me off. That is Rainer with a player name of EDC and Uther played by Jupiter. So looks like we have a new Brack moving across the map over here. Uther's going to grab that watchtower for Team Red. Zeratul is moving around as well. Top lane is pretty secure for Red. Uh, four blue players here moving in to take the watchtower and new Brack is moving into position. But it Oh, I am about to walk into a big trap. Falstad and Kerrigan are moving in behind. Anubarak is standing outside. Sergeant Hammer and Uther aren't really going to help out here, so that'll be a quick first blood. Moving into the blue team's favor. But with Rhaegar moving down into the bottom, into the mid lane here, we don't have much of a problem uh, staying ahead, or er, staying ev even in experience. Rainer's up top collecting that. And it looks like ETC is moving off, or not ETC, Rhaegar. Wow, there's not even an ETC in this game. I don't know why I keep talking about one. So both teams are fairly even. Blue's just slightly ahead in some experience. You can see her XP contribution is fairly even all across the board. I kind of wish you could see total XP for each team. Would be kind of nice to tell where... Uh, how far behind you actually are although red is falling even farther behind at this point I'm not really sure where all this extra experience for blue is coming from red has somebody in every lane oh, I see what happened red hasn't actually cleared out these waves so there's more experience on the map to be taken for uh, the red team which leads to as you can see the levels are getting closer once those minions start to die from each wave. Looks like on the bottom we have Zeratul, Anubrak, and Falstead moving in on Sergeant Hammer. Zeratul has to blink out, but they stay alive for the most part. The top lane things are pretty quiet. Nobody has a lot of kills yet, nor a lot of experience. Both teams have pulled just about even here with those extra minions going down on either side. Kerrigan is moving up to the top for a gank. Looks like Sergeant Hammer is trying to get into a good position. Kerrigan's moving up top, jumps on Rhaegar. Uh, throws down his healing well and his earthbind totem. You can see the sick. Uh, I believe that is the master skin. I did not realize that it gave the, the earthbind totem a different look. Rhaegar still fighting back here. Hungering Arrow gets in but gets distracted by the gate. We haven't really had any action going on anywhere else on the board. Tribute should be spawning here at 235. It comes up on the bottom lane. Right next to that, at this point, both teams have two people down here, although with Sergeant Hammer in position, that is going to give Red a distinct advantage when taking this tribute, along with the fact that two Red team members are going to arrive before any blue. Missile hook there, but the blue team's focus is going to be Sergeant Hammer. They know that her control, her ground control and positioning control is going going to be critical in all these fights as you can see there she was the main focus of all the attacks from Kerrigan and Zeratul. It's like Vala's moving back around here she's kind of trapped herself there's nowhere really for her to go over there and Nubrak is moving back trying to get out of there Falstead is getting out with the Hearthstone so at this point Uther is going to pick up the tribute and we have Vala here still running around um, looks like she actually has nowhere to go. She's going to run right into the turret and get shot in the face. <laughs> so she actually didn't... She just ran out of real estate. Ran out of room. And now we have... Teams evened up. Red has pulled ahead slightly with a couple of kills later in the game. Each of the two kills that Red had was worth more experience than the two kills that Blue had because they came later in the game. We can look at our talents here. Once Blue has level 7, we'll see if anything interesting is going on. Falstead attacking this top bottom lane. Sergeant Hammer and Uther are doing a great job of holding. Spike impaling spikes comes up along with a charge by a Anubarak and nothing happens. Let's see what everyone has picked here. Um, well, once there's a bit more of a lull, about right here should be good. Unless Vala decides to charge in. 
So put Gather Talents. Kerrigan, Impaling Swarm, pretty standard. Has the block, which I don't feel is super useful. Zeratul, pretty standard all around. Anubrick has Mercenary Lord, which could be very interesting. Uh, I'm using the Vile, er, Vile Cleaver and Tenderizer so that my basic attacks drop a cloud of uh, poison and then my attacks my basic attacks also slow my enemies so they have they're exposed to that poison longer it takes them longer to run out of it so we have a pretty massive team fight going on here four members of the blue team crashing onto sergeant hammer she's super dead but divine oh holy light keeps her alive once again she's almost dead but a shield from Re and a heal from regar keeps her alive as well Uther's trying to pick up the tribute. Falstead interrupts it. Zeratul comes in and gets blown up. And that swung 3-0 to zero in favor of Team Red. Quite the massive turnaround, but we do have Mercenary Lord enhanced mercenaries attacking the center right here. But that back line of Hammer and Rainer on the back is just a little bit too much for the blue team to handle at the moment. Although Falstad is trying to cut that gap, cut that lead in half up here if he can get these minions before anyone on red gets up to that lane to soak up all this experience right here. Sergeant Hammer is getting back. Anubrak is attacking Uther, but not much will amount there. So we have three on two on this bottom lane. It's like Rhaegar, Raynor, and Stitches are all moving up to the top. Although Falstad should be okay. He is trying to back out. Realizes what's going on. Red has their ultimates, and if we take a look at what they have chosen, we have Gorge from Stitches, Ancestral Healing from Rhaegar, Blunt Force Gun from Sergeant Hammer, Hyperion from Raynor, and Divine Storm from Uther. Pretty standard talents all around. Uh, mostly focused on damage. Gorge, a little less damage, a little bit more crowd control. That one's A lot of that is to counter Kerrigan and Vala. We have a strafing Vala, want to gorge her. We have a Kerrigan using Maelstrom. Taking her out of the fight will be nice. Our tribute spawning up here, and we have four blue members to three red members. Uh, Raynor fires off Hyperion. You probably should get inside the Void Prism that Zeratul just used. The blue team did just get their ultimates as well. Raynor is up here. Sergeant Hammer and Kerrigan having a bit of a tussle here in the mid with the Ultralisk going off. Big fight going up here with the Shock and Awe missing. Almost everyone on the red team doing very little damage with that Shock and Awe. Sergeant Hammer is trying to get into position here. Now that she's in position, the red team has a nice safety circle to fight from. Zeratul and Falstad are both trying to get Sergeant Hammer. Falstad can fire his hammer right across here, deal damage to Sergeant Hammer, and then push her back. Looks like everyone on the blue team is taking pot shots at Sergeant Hammer from every direction. She'll go down to a blink and a cleave, but not before the red team can secure the tribute. And <laughs> I think... Secure two kills as well, so blue team paid dearly for that. I think Falstad is trying to get out of here at the top. Vala is moving back. We have four members of the blue t of the red team up here pushing the top lane. Red minions pushing every other lane. Without the shots from these towers, these walls should go down. Maybe both fortresses will go down as well. I think we have a big fight going on up here, though. Mostly just poking from both sides. No one really wants to commit to a fight, although Kerrigan is moving out. Ancestral Healing keeps Uther on his feet. Stitches is having to back out here, almost dying, <coughs> but a nice grip right there on Vala. Ends up with a kill. Anubrat comes in to the Hyperion. Rhaegar puts down his healing ward. Heal up a little bit. That Blood Force Gun comes in and takes out Anubrak right on the edge. There's Zeratul with his Void Prism trying to... I think that was just to get himself out of there. So the red team wants to take this boss golem over here. Big old creep wave on the bottom destroys that fort. Mid fort is going to survive. The curse ended, so it's firing back at the minions. Although they should be able to do quite a bit of damage. Unless Falstead decides to fly in. On the top lane, we have all five of the red teams going for the golem. If we take a look at our stats, we have ten kills to three. So red has corrected their early game mistakes quite easily. Uh, hero damage is 18,000 for blue from false out to X. They're actually the highest in the game. But the big difference is in our healings between the two teams. Looks like blue is going for their golem as well. 
But if we take a look at those healings again, we have 9, 10,000, 10,000 healing on the entire blue team, and roughly, you know, Uther with 14,000, Rhaegar with almost 3,000 times the healing of the entire blue team. And they don't have a support, so there's not much they can do about that. Zeratul is standing here, just being like, I'm going to hide in the middle of the enemy team. We say there's a big commitment going on here. Shock and awe goes off. Raider gets saved by his adrenaline rush and an ancestral healing and a healing wave just for good measure. Zeratul is just standing right here off to the side. Uh, somebody on the red team needs to notice what's going on. That singularity strike hurts a bit. But Red moves down and starts to deal with this Golem. They do need to take care of it. Left alone, it probably wouldn't kill the fort, but it would do a decent amount of damage. Uh, I'm not sure what that Void Prism was there for from Zeratul. We've uh, Blue up here taking some Giants. Some Knights in the middle with their Mercenary Lord uh, buff. Gives them more HP, makes them much harder to kill. Both teams are pretty spread out on the map at this point. No imminent engagements are going to happen. Sergeant Hammer wants to pick up these Gaul or these giants. Tribute is spawning, so it probably will force a bit of a fight. But Anubarak is stuck behind uh, enemy lines now with that gorge. He's trying to get out of there. Looks like Rhaegar falls to flying down. You can see his uh, shadow on the ground briefly there. He's going to start collecting that tribute. But it looks like Anubarak is going to die. The Omega Wisp comes out, but Kerrigan gets herself stuck behind in the middle of the blue team. I think she ravaged, ravaged, jumped in there and out. It's five on three. Uh, the blue team would be very, very well served to just bail to get out of here and to give this tribute up. Although a shock and awe going off, that hook goes out. He telegraphs his position with that shock and awe. That's why I threw that hook out there just to see if I could grab him. But that wasn't a critical tribute. It's one. It's the first tribute. No real need for Blue to contest it at this point and throw away uh, the three of them and give Red an even higher lead. They are two ahead at this point. Although with this fort going down, that is going to cut that lead probably about in half. It'll cut it substantially. If that fort actually goes down, those minions drew the shot. Looks like Red is pushing forward here. With five on four with a couple of giants. Void Prism comes out and that triggers the engagement from blue. They come out and just annihilate the two people not in the Void Prism. That is one thing that I really, uh, looks like they lost that fort. So you can see that gained them a full level along with the two kills. Allowed them to catch up a full level, but they are still behind one full level. So as I was saying, with that Void Prism, you are invulnerable while inside of it, so it's actually a better strategy. If part if part of your team gets frozen by it, jump in it with them. Most likely, it'll let you survive a little bit longer. That way, you're not being attacked. This looks like the red team is formulating to give this one up. They are down two players, but oh, oh no! They just gave up any advantage that they had with Kerrigan all the way back here. And losing Vala that early, it's now three on three. The blue team lost all their advantage. Uh, I guess Kerrigan is AFK here. So we have a big fight going on right in the middle of over this tribute. Oh, the blue team lost that. That was huge. Looks like a Nubrak wants to engage, but he doesn't actually damage the person taking the tribute. Nice grip right there on Falstad with the gorge. Hopefully the team realizes that he is in there. And now Red is much, much further away. We'll follow the blunt force gun all the way across the map there. I think the Red team wants to collapse onto this outer fort that Blue has. Decent swell of minions for the Red team along both lanes. See they outnumber Blue. Back line of archers to do a lot of damage. Nicely done. That fort does fall down. So you have a night camp up here. This golem camp will be up in 11 seconds. Bottom golem camp down here in 30 seconds. Zeratul and Kerrigan, I believe. Zeratul is wanting to scout for his team. I think he wants to get... Does he want to get the kill off? I think that's what he wants to do. I think um, maybe he's going to try... He's just scouting to see what's going on. 
sees that we're taking this, maybe he wants to get that. Oh, it looks like Sergeant Hammer realized he was there. Blinks out of the way. Blinks to safety. Anubrak misses with his impaling spikes right there. Looks like Rhaegar and Rainer are going to take this. Tribute is spawning in a perfect position for the red team. Oh, you have to feel for the blue team. This, The RNG spawn locations are not being kind to them right now. Red team is completely set up, and this is a critical tribute. They cannot just let red have this. All that might be exactly what happens. Vala comes in to try and get a stop off. Shock and goes off just seconds too late. And the Void Prism right there actually keeps, prevents damage from going off. And Vala still dies. So that uh, that Void Prism actually saved a lot of damage for the red team that they could have done. So if we look at our healing, the blue team is only at about 17,000, 18,000 healing. Red, 53,000 from Rhaegar alone. So just the way these teams stacked up with all the support being on red, there wasn't much blue could do about this game for the most part, but they do have mercenaries moving across the top. That golem with the curse is absolutely, absolutely devastating. Red is securing the bottom golem as well. So Zeratul's moving in. That cleave takes out way, way too many of those mercenaries. And we have the red team moving in on the front. The curse ends fairly soon. Maybe they can take the keep. It's going to be pretty close. Hyperion goes off, Vala gets sucked in and gripped. I don't know where she's going to get let out. She tumbles out of there, and I think the minions are going to get the kill. Maybe. No, Uther gets the kill. Hyperion moving around there, so now it's five on three with two members of the red team going down. Divine Storm goes off. Now Kerrigan goes in, gets shot in the face. Ah, oh, did her wings just come off? Wow, that physics was weird. So a blue keep will fall here. Bottom blue keep fell to the golem. And with only Zeratul and Falstead alive, this game may end fairly soon. Fa fairly soon. Falstead firing off his shock and off from the uh, from the fountain there. Misses the hook on Falstead just barely. Zeratul's trying. So you see I jumped into the well there to prevent myself from being attacked. But Zeratul's trying to delay the inevitable there. This game will end. And if we look at our stats... Blue team actually did more damage. Uh, 40,000 here, 28,000, 21,000. So they have 67, so 80,000 damage, 100,000, 111,000 damage for the blue team. And then if we move over to the red team, we have uh, about 75 there, about probably 95,000 damage. So the big difference was Rhaegar's huge numbers here, 65,000 healing, supported by Uther with 34,000. The blue team just couldn't do enough damage to really come up with that. And I think a critical turning point in this game, if we go back, um, yeah, there we go, we want up. If we go back to about, I think it happened at about 13 minutes. That's not where I wanted. Come on. We're going to do a little bit of seeking to get there. Come on, let's move 10, 14. I believe it was at roughly 13 minutes. We'll go back to 12, 11, just to be on the safe side. Seek, 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 and then we get there. If we pause at this moment, okay, this isn't quite there yet. We'll increase our speed to faster. This is actually the speed that StarCraft is played on. What the? What is going on here? Well, it looks like the uh, alpha is going to crash on me. So we won't go over this in a little more detail. But it was basically the point where the blue team had five people on the field, red had three, and a tribute had just spawned. And rather than move as five, the blue team decided to separate. And got Vala got caught out alone, and Kerrigan went back to the base. So that made a three-on-three -three situation, which the red team was able to stall until the rest of red was able to show up and they took the tribute. I would consider that really the not the turning point, but the point where Blue was not able to come back anymore. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you later and stop this annoying sound that's going on in the background.